I'm going to start the assembly of the um, engine, the trial assembly, by putting the sleeve on, the inner sleeve from the bearing onto the crank. Um, there's a small spacer ring that I wasn't sure whether it goes on the inside or the outside of, of that. Let me just find that ring. That's there. Um, that isn't part of the bearing. We've got that separately, the inner part of the track. Um, this is simply an adapter. Uh, I'm thinking that that goes on first, then the next part of the bearing race, inner race, and then this sleeve here. Just bring you in slightly on that. So it would be in that order, forget the other. <coughs> There's that inner race. There. Outer race. Whatever you want to call it. And that assembles like that. To give us a complete semicircle for the uh, bearings to run in. So we're going in the order of that part, that part, and then that little spacer ring, which is just a square section ring on the outside. And hopefully that puts the bearing track in the right place to put the crank in the right place in the cases. Um, I think if it this went that way with that right spacer underneath the crank would try to be too far that way in the uh, in the in the drive side of the case or wouldn't work. So I'll assemble this part and we'll see how we go on from there. Now what we've got what I'm going to do is I've got some cooling spray there, freezing spray that goes down to supposedly minus 55. Um, we'll whack some of that around the crank there, shrink that down, and the inner race I'll put on a heater and warm up slightly as well. And all I'm using for a heater Is that is a hot plate, and uh, that's sitting at about 100 degrees ish, just to warm that bearing up a little bit in a race up. We don't want to overheat it, so we'll just put that on there just to let transfer a little bit of warmth, and hopefully that will slide on then to the uh, the crankshaft. Now, as the bearing in a race is warming up, we'll start this cooling down. I'll just keep going at that for a little while. That's starting to get a bit frosty now. Our bearing in a race is up to temperature. Just about 100 degrees, not too hot for a bearing. We'll see what that slips over like. There we go. On without any bashing or anything. Let all that uh, get back to normal temperature now 
and then we'll uh, we'll carry on. Everything's uh, got back up to temperature now. There's our bearing sleeve. Nice and tight on the crank. No bashing, no pressing. So currently I've put the cases on the, the same heater. Normally I use my uh, gas blow lamp, but uh, we've got the electric heater out, so I'll use that for now, leave it for a while, go and mow the lawn or something in between time. Let that warm up and then we'll um, get the bearing into the cases. The bearing is in the fridge, or the freezer at the moment, and again, that'll take it down to about a minus 18. The freezer spray down to about minus 55, so we'll whack a bit of freezer spray around it as well. And hopefully that will just drop in as, uh, as I've done previously with the bronze bushes. And again, like uh, bearings and bushes in the past, I've machined a bush to fit in the bearing. And we've got a locking washer, so I'll assemble the bearing onto there. I'm going to get it out of the freezer in a moment. Cases are nice and hot, very hot. I'll turn that over. They're at uh, about 100 degrees ish. And there's our, there's our bearing out the freezer. We want to go in that way around. So we'll assemble that. We've got the inner track, the ball race removed. That's assembled onto a bush, press bush. Just loosely assemble that. And we'll give it a bit more of this just to shrink it down as much as possible. Spray it on, let it evaporate, it takes the heat out. And hopefully, with a cold bush, I've got a, a mallet just in case, but hopefully, with a cold bush, that should just drop in. Make sure I don't line up my oil holes, it shouldn't do. There we go. In again, no knocking, no pressing. So I'll just leave that in there now to cool down or warm up rather, and um, we'll come back to it in a little while. Hello, this is another day. I've got the engine on the bench. Um, in pieces here from the uh, fitting of the main bearing needle roller. Uh, what I'm going to do now is assemble it, um, pre-assembly, check the end float although it will be locked up to the timing side I'll still shim the bearing over so the bearings at least running 
in the correct place in its track and uh, should anything move there'll be a limited amount of end float I think it's one and a half to three thousand something like that um, of end float uh, we'll get that shimmed up and then uh, we'll build it up with the camshaft in dry run no rods or anything like that and we'll put the other side uh, gear on the oil pump drive gear and the spacers and the uh, the track the outer bit of the track for the bearing so let's get to that I'm going to put a little bit of oil in the bearing there's our uh, assembled needle roller and ball thrust I've put the uh, the track the ball track back in there so it's all ready to uh, ready to go and then when the cranks sitting in that the uh, the race of the the inner race of that will be sitting on the ball bearing track so it will all be that way down if you like let's get some oil around it And I've just got it on some uh, some blocks of wood here that uh, you've no doubt seen me use before in all the videos. I think they were in the last uh, BSA crank shaft bearing video a couple of years back. And um, they're actually my uh, chocks for stopping the uh, the cars rolling. But they're just right for this job as well. So we'll. Uh, multi-purpose them a little bit on there and we've got to take this apart again once we've got a measurement of the end float uh, to do that this bearing on here if we can see that is um, actually not tight at all it's been um, knurled in the past so when this gets finally assembled uh, with a new bearing I'd probably recommend lock tightening that on uh, seeing as this has got the cush drive assembly on it so that doesn't spin then but it does make shimming quite easy so not, not strictly necessary to oil it this time around because it'll be It'll be replaced anyway, but uh, we'll do it. We'll just take that spacer off there for now. Hopefully that doesn't fall off. Ooh, it'll open if I put the right way round. Slide that in nicely there, and that's now, as I say, resting on the ball race at the back. A little bit on that. Right, I'm just getting used to this new uh, new video camera still. I'm watching myself drifting out of shot on the screen on it. I've yet to do any editing with this uh, with this camera, so I've no idea what this is going to turn out like. Right, I'll just go and get some nuts, and uh, we'll just put a few nuts on there to. Uh, to lock that up then we'll measure the setup to measure the end float. And we'll drop a few uh, a few nuts and washes on around the edge there.
we just need to make sure that we there is a little bit of play in these cases so you just need to make sure that your uh, barrel registers flat before you nip everything up with them not being doweled there is a location in the casting and so you have got a little bit of uh, a little bit of flex there and sometimes that can make the difference with your uh, your cam and your your crank turning as well I can't remember if I've mentioned that before or not so I'll come back when we're set up with the uh, getting ready to set up with the uh, measuring the end float Okie dokie, that's all bolted up and the good news is the crank spins and we have got end float now that feels like a lot, it feels sort of like eighth of an inch but I'm sure when we measure it it'll be a lot less than that what I do for measuring end floats on these we're a little bit of old Dexian shelving material there and a couple of short bolts for there where the primary case normally bolts just nip them onto there And that gives us a nice flat steel surface to go off for a mag base. And then we've got the spacer there with its um, recess towards the crankshaft. And there, the, where the seal normally runs. And then I've got a bit of tubing that slips over there. A washer and a nut, and that will just it only needs to be hand tight, that'll be enough just to lock the bearing against the crankshaft um, flywheel cheek against the web. So now just check again if you get, get your fingers in both sides like that, and lift it up and down, and get a dial gauge, sit him on there, little mag base, just bring it forward a bit, try and get him just on the end there, just putting a bit of preload on. there and is that visible in our let me just zoom out a little bit pan out there we go a little bit so there's our little mag base on there and then I can move the crank up and down like that and we can measure and I can see there we've got about 33 thou of float there I'll zoom in for you so you can see what's going on I'll give the dodgy camera work here I don't employ the services of a professional so we're on round about zero there Push down. That's, you can push a little bit more on it if you try. Thirty, thirty-three, thirty-four thou on there. 
So now we'll strip down again. Now we know that figure, we'll strip it down again and uh, we'll sort some shims out back in a little while again. So with the bearing removed, we've got a, a selection of shims there. We'll uh, pick sufficient. We want uh, what do we want? Thirty, about thirty-two thou. So we'll go with a twenty on there. An eight. And there, four, I'll just, um, just gather them up and give them a quick measure. Now I've measured a few um, of the other bearings, I've got some bearings actually, but um, I believe the guy has already got his drive side main. Um, they all measure 629 thou across the width of the bearing. Anyway, the ones I've got under 620, 6206 is the same, the ball race one. Thirty-one. Now uh, that's giving us. That's about as close as I'm going to get. And I say, with, with it not being a bush and with it being locked up to that that side, we should be fine. I'll put the thicker thicker shim towards the outside there, and we will pop that on, which is should be. That way, writing again. The, these where you get them with the writing on, on that side. You know the writing's on the outside of the other one. So put the writing down if you assemble them. So the the bearing goes together the same way. Just a minor thing. Um, I'll just get the camshaft. Might as well pop that in while I'm doing it. So with the bearing removed, we've got a, a selection of shims there. We'll uh, pick sufficient. We want uh, what do we want? Thirty, about thirty-two thou. So we'll go with a twenty on there. An eight. And there, four, I'll just, um, just gather them up and give them a quick measure. Now I've measured a few um, of the other bearings, I've got some bearings actually, but um, I believe the guy has already got his drive side main. Um, they all measure 629 thou across the width of the bearing. Anyway, the ones I've got under 6206 is the same, the ball race one. 31. Now uh, that's giving us. That's about as close as I'm going to get. And I say, with, with it not being a bush and with it being locked up to that that side, we should be fine. I'll put the thicker thicker shim towards the outside there. 
and we will pop that on which is should be that way writing again the, these where you get them with the writing on on that side you know the writings on the outside of the other one so put the writing down if you assemble them so the, the bearing goes together the same way just a minor thing um, I'll just get the camshaft, might as well pop that in while I'm doing it. And we'll put a bit of oil on that as well. Right, this is only a dry run, obviously it's got no con rods on or anything. Down to there. bearing drop a dry side case on and I'll just get this buttoned up again and come back to you again And we're back. A uh, little bit more playing about. I had to have a, had a little bit more shimming. Another uh, another fourth hour to it. So we're on now. We've got about about three to four thou of uh, end float there. And if I bring in on the gauge. that hopefully you can see this so I'm happy at that that would be good for a uh, one with a bushing um, but as I say once this is locked up to the the timing side we uh, we won't need to worry about that anyway but it's done for uh, for prosperity so to speak I'll just turn everything over and we'll uh, finish assembling the the timing side Right, I've just popped on the drive side ring there. Again, little tiny bit of warmth. Um, just actually held it in hand that time. Pop that on. I think it's a little tiny bit looser at that end of the shaft. I'll just slightly, yeah, that's down. So that's the inner race of the. So the outer of the inner race of the bearing makes sense. There's our uh, spacer ring. That's just going on to take up that little bit of clearance there. That just fits over nicely on there. And now we can actually pop our gear on. No key in it for the moment because it's got to come apart again. And I'll just find a little bit of a, a tube just to tap that down. So there's our oil pump drive gear on. Or a crank gear rather. Now our oil pump drive scroll. Left hand thread. A little bit awkward, I'm working around the camera. Just going to span for that one. Crank a little bit and nip that down. 
there we have it. I haven't got the outer lock washer and ring, an outer nut there, but we're on, spacered up, everything tight. Let's clear these tools away and we'll set it upright. And there we have our crank assembly that spins absolutely beautiful. Obviously locked up to this side, we've got no end float whatsoever. Um, it's controlled by that ball race there, but we know we have got a few thou clearance on the uh, on the drive side bearing. I've just got a little bit of tape around there just to hold that um, spacer on there. So yeah, that is really nice. That can go back to the, uh, the guy now and he can finish building it, strip that down again, do his sludge trap etc and uh, get his con rods on and things. The camshaft moves nicely, just checking that there. So we've got end float there on the cam from the, uh, as the gear isn't on, locking it up to the bush. But that spins nice. All in all good. Um, I'd like to have a go at one of these doing this conversion. I've got them cases that I showed earlier on in the video. Um, I'll get another bearing on the way. And I think we'll have a crack at that. Um, yeah, quite impressed. I haven't got the timing cover, the outer timing cover for this one. Um, I don't think I'll get a chance to get hold of it to show how it's been done with this uh, coronavirus lockdown business going on. Um, I mean, the guy will pick this up, I'll just leave it behind the gate and uh, he can come and uh, pick it up from behind the gate. I won't even be there, so uh, we should be fine on that. You can argue the toss whether it's essential or non-essential forevermore. So, yeah, another one done. Um, hope you've enjoyed these uh, few videos. Um, I know I've been absent for quite a long time. Let me get myself in the shot. So I know I've been absent for quite a long time, um, been busy with uh, with work, changing jobs a few times and things backwards and forwards. Um, I've had to commit a lot of time to that, so I haven't had that much chance to get into the workshop to be truthful. Uh, but we'll see, we'll see if this, this other project of doing, doing one of these conversions uh, comes to fruition and we'll try and get back to some other things. So I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing and uh, I'll see you again on the next one. Bye for now.